Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Matt AO2, The Magic of Numbers. Today, we have a very special lecture. This is from a different book. It's not from the usual textbook. Instead, it's an activity from uh, this book here, Inspiring Mathematics, Lessons from Navajo Nation Math Circles. So these are interactive activities that are designed to help you all get an intuitive grasp of what we mean by certain mathematical concepts. So one of the things that we've been learning over the last couple of weeks has been modular arithmetic, right? And there are these weird set of arcane rules that we have you guys learn and then do them and somehow that turns into some kind of number system. What we're going to be doing today in this class, in the first half of class, is we're going to be exploring uh, one of these aspects of modular arithmetic through a hands-on activity. And I'm going to have you guys be mathematicians and you're going to come up with, get, with conjectures. So you guys are going to try to figure out what is going on. And instead of me just telling you and improving stuff, I'm going to ask you guys to come up with uh, what you think is happening. And so uh, the exercise is uh, this beanbag tossing thing. Um, and I unfortunately didn't have beanbags, so I brought in a number of small various objects, uh, which you can toss around. Uh, but let's go through the instructions and then uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So the first thing is you guys should divide up into groups of about 10 people. So uh, wait a moment before starting, but I'm going to have you guys actually divide up into small groups. Uh, the groups can change over time. You don't have to stick with the same group the entire time. In fact, it's probably best if you don't. Um, then you choose two numbers. One number is a modulus N, uh, which is the total number of people um, who are going to be tossing uh, things around. And the other number is going to be a tossing number, T. So just a moment, let me grab my notes since I had something I want to draw. Uh, and then what you do is you arrange n people into a circle. So that will look something like, uh, well, you guys know what circles look like. So let's say we had six people. So you have six people arranged in a circle. So you should immediately recognize this as something that looks like mod six arithmetic, right? So you have six people arranged in a circle, six different positions, and maybe you have a couple of people sitting out to the side, but it'll depend on what number you're choosing and how big your group is. Um, so let's say n is equal to six. And then what we're going to do is, uh, well, then you're going to toss the object. So for example, maybe this ball of yarn here. So you're going to toss this object around um, the circle in steps of size t. So for example, if t is equal to two, then I might start here. It doesn't matter where you start. And you skip this, you skip the first person and you toss it to the person two away. You do the same thing. You do the same thing. And you keep on going. And then the question is, does everyone eventually get the object? So will everyone eventually get this ball of yarn? And in the case of n is equal to six, where you have six people, and t is equal to two, well, you can pretty easily see that you, you not everyone gets the ball of yarn, right? because uh, you uh, keep on skipping people and the same people get skipped each time. And so uh, then what we answer is no to, does everyone eventually get the object? Now, if I wanted to, I could probably sit down and just mathematically analyze this without doing anything and be like, oh, well, when does, the, when does everyone get the object eventually? But instead, I'm gonna have you guys try to come up with conjectures about when this happens. And the way I'm going to do this I'm going to, is I'm going to have you all do a bunch of experiments. You're going to divide them into groups. You'll notice that I have a big table I've written on a chalkboard here. And uh, basically, um, well, we already, I just showed that for n equal to six and t equal to two, the answer is no. So for that, so for that uh, n equals six, t equals two, um, I'm going to, oh, I guess I should, I'll draw a line with here in a moment, but maybe I'll put a little n here. And so what I'm going to ask you guys to do is I'm going to ask you guys to fill out this entire table. So divide up into groups. Each one of you picks some n, some t, uh, toss numbers around, try to fill out this table. And whenever you do fill out something, you come down here and put down an n or a y. Um, and then we'll look to see what patterns we get at the end of the day. Now, of course, there might be some mistakes. So instead of just putting out a big y or a big n, I'm going to ask you to put down a little n or a little y so that in case someone made a mistake, we can, well, see it because we'll have lots of people doing the experiments together. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, 
And uh, just as a sort of uh, forewarning, this is going to be closely related to modular arithmetic. And this is going to be related to something called generators and uh, et cetera. Um, but we're not going to talk about that yet because what I want you to do is I just want you to get an intuitive feel for what's going on when you're throwing numbers around and counting in modular arithmetic. So with that said, please everyone get up out of your seats, divide up into groups. You guys can come down here and pick one of these various objects. I also have a bunch of random, well, Ace bandages, uh, I mean, not ace bandages, just like athletic wraps just in case I ran out of objects. So uh, divide into the groups, come grab an object, and start tossing them around, and uh, let's start filling this out. So in a moment, I'm going to start asking you guys to start thinking about patterns. So I, I know I've been walking around and asking you guys about patterns already, but this is part of the job of a mathematician. So um, in earlier parts of this class, I've just sort of like given you, oh, this is something someone discovered once upon a time. Today, we're having you guys discover it yourself. So um, clearly this has something to do with modular arithmetic, but um, there are also these general patterns that you guys hopefully found as you went around discovering it. Uh, so, why don't you guys uh, either shout at me or put in the chat, uh, what are some of the general ideas you had about this pattern of numbers? Even very basic theorems, like can you tell me about anything about tossing number one? Oh, sorry, what was that? I heard some. One always works, so. That is a theorem you could construct, right? I claim as a mathematician in Matt AO2 that if a tossing number is one, it always works. Does anyone want to tell me why? Oh, someone else had the uh, thing in chat that prime groups are easier to work with. Prime mods were less likely to leave people without being tossed to. For seven, everyone gets it maybe because it's a prime number. Okay, so like it seems like there was some other more subtle fact that people were discovering. Something about prime numbers, but sort of makes sense, right? Because we were talking about those a lot in like right before reading week. Uh, even numbers divide. So uh, someone, uh, do you mind clarifying that a bit? So what is this about even numbers? Oh, uh, actually, uh, Oh, so if n divided by t is a whole number that doesn't work. In fact, I'm going to put up all of these things on here. So I already knew the answers, but we I still figured it out all on your own. And let me color them to try to make the patterns a little bit easier. So uh, once you start seeing these patterns, you can start uh, making guesses. So like the easiest one is, well, if your tossing number is one, it always works. At the same time, uh, even numbers divide the group, not everyone gets a toss. So uh, I think what you're trying to say uh, is that when the tossing number is half of the modulus, it doesn't work. Okay, yeah, so these are all patterns that you guys have found. Um, if T is a common factor of N, not everyone gets it. Okay, so this is all seeming to be about these common divisors between two different numbers, right? So somehow things go wrong, or sorry, uh, things go wrong when you have all these common divisors. Um, oh, okay, so clearly someone has been paying a lot of attention. Someone guessed only relative prime numbers work. So that's another thing you could uh, look at. You could be like, well, what's the overall pattern? So we found small patterns, right? So we found pat small patterns like, oh, all the ones work uh, in both directions, actually, whether it's a tossing number or if you're just one person sitting here tossing to yourself over and over again, um, you'll always get all the items if you're just one person, obviously. Well, let me keep this in case I need more demos. Um, but yeah, so let's see just a moment. So what's going on here? Oh, I definitely just printed out the wrong version of this. Okay, but anyway, so uh, the, the question is, can you continue this pattern out onto infinity? So obviously we've done all these experiments from one through 10. And often when mathematicians are coming up with some new set of patterns, one of the first things you do is, well, you try to see if you can see a pattern. And so that's what we did in class today. We looked at all the numbers from one to 10 and one to 10 for tossing number of modulus, and we tried to see patterns. And it does look like we saw some patterns, right? Something about common divisors. And indeed, that's what um, 
Uh, if both are even, that uh, doesn't work. <coughs> oh, interesting. When the modular number is even, it works for odd adds vice versa for the odds. Is that always true? When the modular number is even, it works for odds. What about 10 and five? So this is one of the things you have to be careful about because you might see these patterns, but then uh, they look like they almost always work, but then there are a couple of exceptions here and there. And it turns out in math, if there's a, even a single exception, then you don't have a general theorem. And this is why it's useful to write out these tables, but you still have to be a little bit careful because um, you don't necessarily know that it's always true. And that's what proofs are for. So in today's class, we've sort of done the experimental part of math. So where you're just trying things out and seeing what sticks. But of course, then there is also the proving side of math, which is, well, once you have a conjecture, all ones work, then you might have to prove it. And so one easy proof is, well, if I have, if I'm just one person, any number, any tossing number works because, well, I'll always clearly toss to myself. And so you can call out a proof, right? So that is a proof that if the tossing number is one, it always, sorry, if the modulus is one, it always works. Similarly, you can prove that if the modulus is anything, but the tossing number is one, it also still uh, always works because you're just literally going around everyone. So there's no one who's ever skipped. <clears throat> uh, doesn't work for numbers multiples. Yeah, so that's another one of these uh, little facts that you could have discovered. And that's something you can also prove. So like if you're doing, if you have uh, say five people and you're skipping five people each time, you're just gonna always come around to the, your starting point. And if you think back to modular arithmetic, this makes sense, right? Because in mod five, five is the same as zero. And that's actually a very important point, which is that um, somehow you're getting at all these facts about modular arithmetic just by tossing numbers around. Uh, let's see. We only tried numbers one to 10. What can you conjecture about what happens for all the numbers? Um, but the mod n and t are the same. It never works. Yes, except for one. One is the exception there because, well, I mean, it always works for one. But if for any other number, so if you look on this diagonal line here, so this one here, you're right. Along the diagonal, it seems to never work. And so you can sort of see this pattern and you'd be like, oh, well, maybe I can prove that about a general case. Uh, let's erase that. Yeah, and the same for multiples. So one of the things you might, um, one of the other things you might notice, and I think someone figured this out because it had to do with primes, six is a very not prime number. The six is probably the least primish number on this uh, table, right? because that's factors of one, two, three, and six. Um, whereas seven is a very prime number. And so somehow there is this connection between primes and non-primes that you can see by looking at these two columns. Oh, uh, by looking at these two columns. And that's also important because that leads to more general conjectures. And so we have the easy conjectures like, well, all ones work, or if n is, if n is equal to t, then it doesn't work. Um, but then, by looking at the difference between primes and non-primes, you might come up with an even more general conjecture, which I think someone mentioned in the chat pretty early on, which is the main theorem here, which we're not going to prove, but we might, might prove it later, but uh, it is this tossing number theorem. So when the modulus and tossing number are relatively prime, all of the people will catch the beanbag. Otherwise, some people will not have a turn to catch it. And uh, I'm going to leave you guys with that to think a little bit about that particular the uh, theorem. And uh, I think that's uh, any questions about that, uh, what we've been doing in today's exercise. Yeah, so ba uh, the, the basic summary is today I made you guys actually work as mathematicians and not just students of mathematics. This is one of the things mathematicians do is they try to find these patterns and prove them. It's not just about learning all these arcane facts. It's really about experimentation, guessing, and then trying to think about why things happen. And with that, uh, wait, uh, so did someone have a question? Oh, okay. And with that, I will go ahead uh, and <laughs> I would have been a mathematician sooner if I knew I could just throw things. Well, I mean, that's only part of the job. You only get to throw things sometimes, like when you're teaching a math class. Um, but anyway, with that, I will leave you to your break. After the break, we will well, do this a little bit more formally and we'll uh, go through modular computation again, since that is stuff that will show up on the midterm. And then at the end of class, if we have any extra time, I'm happy to take questions about the uh, midterm and, uh, and or review some of the techniques. So with that, uh, let's see you all back at 10.02. And with that, um, break. <laughs>